You're tuned in to We Talk Radio Network. Please welcome, for the very first time ever, it is an honor to roll out the red carpet for this beautiful lady, the author of the book Celebrating Me, Embracing Who God Created Me to Be, the beautiful Johnny Green. How are you, Queen? I'm wonderful. How are you? Yes, yes, yes. Claps, claps, claps. I, I am, am super over the moon blessed. to be on your show. Yay! Um, God has just been so awesome since I hit yes. Dallas. Uh, I, I want to thank everybody uh, in Dallas. Uh, you guys have rolled out the red carpet. You have gone over and beyond. And the part that you didn't tell is the fact that God is the one who put this book together because I'm Amen. supposed to be celebrating writing a book on travel. That's but right. as time went on, my sister suggested you have more data on celebrating your own your life than you do on um, traveling. And so I said, okay, we'll go with that. And then she started telling me, well, this person wants to be in the book. And I asked this person, and here I have a book with seven people in it, and, in the, and the seven are called the Divine Seven. This is yes. what God showed me to call them, the Divine Seven. And I'm number eight because it's a new beginning for me. And um, it's just so amazing that I only know two of the people that's in the book, and that's uh, Beatrice Kemp and Linnell White. Everybody else that's in the book, I didn't meet until I came to Dallas. As a matter of fact, Brent Wolfskill, I just met him last Monday night when we did the live recording, which isn't even edited and out yet. But um, it's just so amazing how God has put all of us together and we all have something in common. Absolutely. And I, Absolutely. And I thank God that for your testimony and I thank God for every one of the seven that's in the book. Um, all I have to say to uh, the one, and you know, it's so it's so fitting that you would do the interview with me today and you're in the book because we sent out all of the books before we went to Milwaukee for the weekend. And I'm starting to get uh, messages. The books are out. So people are mm. reading the book. <laughs> yes, they are. How excited. Yes, they How are. Excited. Yeah, I am. I'm super, super excited. I, I, I want to talk about your story and your journey in this book. You okay. have such a powerful testimony, and I don't want to give it all away. You know me. I'm not going to give it all away. <laughs> no. But they're going to have to get I, I the book. Wanna, they're going to have to get that book. But I want to yeah, talk about yeah. a couple of, 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 uh, of, of things. Tell me about your favorite. I'm talking about on, in your story, your favorite part of the book. Um. I think one of my favorite parts is how God favored me. And mm-hmm. when I say that, um, I happened to uh, get a job babysitting for a family um, in uh, Marin County, which is the same county that Walter Payton is from. We grew up in the same town, but I didn't know him personally because he's much younger than I am. And how that God allowed me to uh, start cooking when I was young and I got good at it. And um, the lady that I was babysitting for, she came home, and she'd go, oh, my God, the food smells so good. Let me take some to my husband. So when she'd taken it to her husband, then there was other doors and avenues that was opened up for me. Because back in 1963, blacks did not uh, go in restaurant. Um, you did not. Uh, there was no cashiers. That was unheard of. But. Once I got 15 years old, he came to pick me up, and I got my driver's license. And I started to cashier for them when I had when I went over to take uh, lunch for them. So there was a lot of doors that opened up for me. And also, you're going to find out uh, <laughs> there was really some twists after I got that driver's license because I became a <laughs> hall of, of moonshine. <laughs> so that is one of the chapters that, you know, people are going to get a lot of laugh at it because I was actually a queen of the county, but I was Holly Moonshine. <laughs> so that's on one now. of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of my favorites. Uh, let's see, what would be another one? 
Oh, another one would be how that God um, gave me the job at Harley Davidson, and how that um, yes. the lady that was supervisor went out on maternity leave. I was pregnant at the time, and so she was to be back by the time I left. She decided not to come back, and I was already out on maternity leave. So they asked me, they called me up at home and asked me if I'd come back as, as supervisor. And um, that's, you know, it's just so many God moments that are that are like my favorite. Uh, back then in 1973, uh, I took on the task of uh, 17 employees, two shifts, and I was the only black in that department. Mm. Wow. Yeah. And so you wow. you got to get the book to read it. <laughs> got to get that book. One of, my, <laughs> one of my least favorite was, uh, I, the book is dedicated to my grandson and my two daughters. Yes. I was, that was going to be my uh, next topic. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. That is one of my No, least no. Favorite. Yes, thank you. You go right ahead. <laughs> it's one of my least favorite because of the fact that um, I picked my grandson up in Milwaukee when he was 11 days old. I'd taken him to uh, California to live with me, him and his mother. They stayed with me 12 years, and uh, he had asthma really bad. And the doctor said that he had to, his mother needed to take him out of uh, California. And she got a transfer, and she moved him. Well, spring break, um, when he was still, I mean, 15 years old, he wanted to come visit me and some of his friends. And he arrived on the 23rd of March, had an asthma attack on the 27th, died on the 30th. I thought I would lose my mind. Mm-hmm. So that is one of my least favorite because, you know, but I thank God that I had a chance to experience being a grandmother. I don't have any grandchildren anymore, but I thank him that he allowed me to experience that. So I think that I truly believe that this book is an end time book for right now because there's so many people hurting. Um, the business, um, I've had business, and I've lost business. And uh, I got caught up in the 2008 uh, recession. So my heart goes out to all of those that are caught up in this pandemic recession. And I'm hoping that the ones that read the book will be able to get some kind of comfort in knowing that God has no respect of a person. What he did for me, he'll do it for you. We're in a pandemic Amen. now, and I can tell you that God has me in the best place that I can be. I will be 74 December 15th, mm. and I have never, life has never, ever been as sweet for me as it is now. Amen. So wow. if you know anything about the book of, uh, of, of, if you know anything about Joseph, you know that he went through a lot. I've gone through a lot. If my life had to parallel anybody's life in the Bible, it would be Joseph. And I'm just so grateful for all of the hurt, the pain that I've, and the experiences that I've had, because it has made me who I am today. You're tuned in to We, we Talk, Talk Radio, Radio Network. Network.